how do we build this next generation of plant breeding innovators and leaders? How do we make sure they're not just trained, but they're informed, connected, and they're ready to drive real impact? I don't have the answers. That's the truth. But I know somebody who might. So I'm going to call up my buddy Jovan at UC Davis. He's tackling the talent pipeline challenge from the inside. And let's see what he's able to tell us. You open my friend. Thank you for taking my call. You're welcome, Adeline, always. Hey, so I'm heading to the World Seed Congress in Istanbul, and it's got me thinking about leadership right across the whole global seed sector, but especially in plant breeding. I know that you've worked with plant breeders from right across the world. Tell me first about what do we need in, in terms of skills from plant breeders today? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question. I think um, it is obvious uh, that the plant breeder today is, is, has a completely different uh, way of doing things. You know, like 20, 30 years ago, it was a one-person show. And now we have so many supporting, uh, uh, you know, roles and technologies and, you know, cell biology, molecular biology, you know, analytics, AI, all of these things. And all of a sudden now, a, a, a breeder really need to be the one putting all of these things together. So it requires quite a bit of technical skills for sure, but I would say more of a soft skills. And uh, putting these two things together, particularly, in a time of uh, climate change, where we need new variety to, to really resist to these changes. So make them differently so that we can continue to innovate and provide that food security. So we both know there's a lot of retirements happening across plant breeding, but is it a really big deal? So is, is this something that's keeping you up at night or is it a bit overblown? No, I mean, uh, that's a great question. What keeps me up at night is the growing um, talent gap. It is actually the reason why uh, UC Davis launched the Plumbering Academy back in 2005 after a Delphi study that showed fewer breeders were coming out to universities. And, and now, as you said, we are seeing more and more retirements and the replacements are not at the level. Uh, so breeding isn't just about the technology. It's really a long-term hands-on experience and wisdom. So... And if we don't pass that wisdom, we risk falling behind when the world needs us the most, right? The world needs a food security, climate resilience, you know, uh, and that's it. So you work with all kinds of different companies from right across the seed sector. I bet, correct me if I'm wrong, that you see the good, the bad, and the ugly in terms of how companies look after their plant breeders. So, so talk to me a little bit. What do smart companies understand about talent development that, that maybe others might miss? Um, another great question, I know. But, you know, those companies, they see breeders as strategic assets. Okay, not just technical stuff. And they treat them well. Um, and they also invest in them and they give them space around the table that they sit on. They don't see talent just like an HR issue, like hire an HR talent recruiter and, and you're done. No, they understand this is a key part of their business strategy. It's a core business delivery, basically, because without the right people, there will be no real innovation coming up in the companies. So for anyone who doesn't know, the UC Davis Plant Breeding Academy that, that you're obviously involved in, Jovan, has become a training ground for global plant breeders, really from right around the world. You've, you're operating now in three regions, and you've got students and professionals coming in from more than 60 countries. So talk to me a little bit about what kind of students come through your door and why. The academy is really designed with the seed industry in mind uh, to help companies uh, uh, train the future breeders from within because now we don't have enough of the students coming off university 
that's the opportunity because we do have a talent within the industry. We get assistants, associates, early career scientists, people who show potential and they want to grow. We also have experienced breeders. They want to really sharpen their skills and stay current. There are also recent grads uh, that have a nice academic background, but they lack a real world plan breeding experience and a commercial mindset, very important. But it doesn't stop here. We also see research leaders who wants to understand breeding more so they can support breeding better. Uh, we see trial and seed production specialists. They want to understand breeding so they can connect better with the breeders. And even executives and marketeers, uh, uh, people who, who really want to know how breeding actually works so they can make better decisions. So talk to me, Jovan, about keeping a program relevant. How do you design a program that, that really keeps up with the pace of innovation? I mean, we've got it in breeding and biotech and data science. It's just accelerating so fast. Yeah, great question. Well, we keep things rooted in real world breeding. That's our starting point, okay? The curriculum is always evolving. We bring the latest, you know, in technologies, in breeding technologies, in genomics, you know, data uh, science things of that nature. But just as important, we bring in instructors with real hands-on experience. Uh, that we are not just academic teaching from the textbooks. So when I come to UC Davis after 25 years in private sector, I realized pretty soon I'll be teaching what I used to do. So I co-founded my own company, Mara River Seed, where I still actively breed watermelon and melon. That keeps me and the program connected to the real world challenges that any breeder face today. So also at the same time, we, we teach what really doesn't change. Mendelian genetics, solid experimental design, good breeding practices, taking an idea all the way to an improved variety in a grower's field. And one more thing, breeding is much more complex than it used to be, as I said in the beginning. There are more stakeholders, more decision to take, there is more pressure. And that's why we focus also on leadership, communication, and soft skills. Those matter just as much as the technical skills these days. All right. So sum it up for me, Jopin. I'm As I said, I'm heading to the World Seed Congress this year. If you had one single message for seed companies that are, that are going to be there with me, what would it be? What should they be thinking about when it comes to talent and training and really the future of innovation? Well, uh, my message is simple. Uh, dear seed industry friends, don't treat talent as a side project. It should be the project, okay? If you want real innovation, you want resilience, and you want to drive your seed business and grow your seed business, you need to invest in people just like you invest in new technologies, okay? Breeding uh, breakthrough and innovation don't happen without great minds behind them. It's how, as you, note, as you mentioned in the beginning, it's how we build the future of this industry, one breeder at a time. Jovan, as always, it's a pleasure to chat with you. Thanks for making the time. And, and thanks for making this call, uh, Madeline. <laughs>